Let's do it. Wish you engineer. I've used the PowerCube device in several of my videos to measure some of the characteristics of various strikes. It's essentially a foam spring bounded by composite plates containing accelerometers that measures the acceleration of one of the composite plates when exposed to an impact from a punch or a kick. The acceleration of the impact is resisted, if you like, by the foam spring. Based on the characteristics of the foam spring, the PowerCube software extrapolates compressive energy in uh, calories by 10 and uh, speed power in foot-pounds per second. These values are then combined using an undisclosed relationship to calculate a value that the manufacturer calls human force, measured in a proprietary unit called the Franklin, named after the inventor of the device. The manufacturers of the PowerCube calibrate each of, their, each of their devices using various types of test machinery and, and types of tests. However, the manufacturers have not disclosed any self-calibration techniques or methods for uh, users of the device. For those wishing to use the PowerCube in studies, or for the more scientifically minded, this is most unfortunate. Those with a scientific interest are not the only folk who may have an interest in self-calibration uh, routines or techniques for the PowerCube device. Typical users may wish to self-calibrate the device to ensure that the device's output um, is consistent with the output of, of all other power cubes on purchase. Users may also wish to ensure that their device is not suffering from degradation of the foam spring, which would significantly affect its performance due to, ch due to the changing spring characteristics. In the absence of any self-calibration methods or techniques provided by the manufacturer, I have decided to provide a DIY self-calibration drop test or series of tests. In order to perform the test, you will need to place your power cube on a flat, rigid surface, such as a concrete floor. I used a five kilogram dumbbell to perform a set of drop tests from set heights of 0.5 meters and one meter above the power cube strike surface. The acceleration due to gravity should be fairly consistent regardless of where you are in the world. So as long as your height measurements are accurate and the weight that you use is identical, you should get consistent results with what I have achieved in this series of tests. Ensure that your power cube cables are protected from impact by the dumbbell and that you don't drop the dumbbell on your toes. Be careful and sensible when performing tests of this nature. Don't be a dumbbell. I performed a total of six tests at 0.5 meters and eight tests at one meter. And this is what the tests looked like.
And this is what the data from the tests looked like. Two of the data points noted for the tests at one meter height were discarded because they deviated significantly from the other data points. The power cube device is very sensitive to the location of the strike because the accelerometer is mounted at the center of the front strike plate. And my aim was a bit off for these two discarded points. However, for the other points, the results were reasonably consistent as can be seen in the table. At 0.5 meters, the average impact values were approximately 2,627 Franklins, 21 calories by 10, and 2,473 foot-pounds per second. At 1 meter, the average impact values were approximately 7,442 Franklins, 64 calories by 10, and 6,266 foot-pounds per second. If you have a power cube device, and wish to perform a set of cali calibration tests, I hope that this gives you enough information to do so. Finally, a viewer of mine requested that I do a set of drop tests on my load cell from a height of 0.5 meters above the, the surface of the load cell. And this is what those tests looked like. I apologize for the monitor being unclear in the footage. It was washed out by my camera, but the peak force impact results are as displayed in the table on the screen. I hope that this was useful and I'll see you all next time. Cheers.